and distinguished colleagues. As you directed, mine will be very brief and different. If my other colleagues have mentioned this, I wouldn't have insisted. If I was a great man, I was very close to him when he joined us in the Senate. Very courageous, very young, death as all of us know is going to happen to each and every one of us. The time is what we don't know. I believe that even death, this angel of death, wouldn't have picked on Patrick Ifeng. But the angel of death follows orders from Almighty Creator, who created us and fixed the date for our departure. What I want to appeal, I thought about it since yesterday and was thinking that I'll bring it as a kind of motion. But I don't know whether it will be right, so I want to appeal, Mr. President, and my distinguished colleagues. We all know and said that if I is no more, he will be committed to us on the 22nd, the spirit and soul will be gone. But his dreams and aspirations is there on ground because he has the Ifeanyi Foundation. What I want to appeal to you, Mr. President, is let us keep the spirit aspirations of Ifeanyi alive. How? It has happened before. Chuba Okadibo was a great politician. When he died, years after, his wife, widow, Margaret, was sitting around here with me. Our first lady was virtually forced Remi Tinubu to come to the Senate by people of Lagos after her husband, who is the president. She served two times. And when it is time in Lagos, it used to be only two times. They insisted that she should go for a third time. And why? Because she performed credibly. In fact, she told me her dream was to be a pastor, and she is one. After that, we had Senator Isuen, as it, from South, eh? Isuen. She was the wife of a great general from South South, and she performed creatively here. After that, right there, where if I used to sit, Abiru is sitting down there. His father was a senator in 1979. Right on my right is Yeradua. Everybody knows who Yeradua is. Senator Obasanjo if you remember, was the daughter of General Basinger. Sitting in front of me, right there, is Defiani. His father was a great senator. Even in America, the Kennedys, when the president was assassinated, his brother became the senator, and he spent 40 years in the Senate and the Bush family. Finally, my appeal, Mr. President, to you and my distinguished colleagues. His wife, fortunately, is 50 years or so, a wonderful wife. Let us support the family and have the spirit representative of the Fiyayin here in the chamber when the election for the Anambra senatorial district that he represents comes over. Thank you very much. May you so rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, distinguished colleague. of our brother, Senator Dr. Ifani Oba. Mr. 
Mr. President, I speak with a heavy heart this afternoon as we bid farewell to our dear brother, distinguished Senator Ifai Patrick Uba. Our path crossed about 14 years ago when he was more active, much more active in the business world. Of course, with inclination and interest in politics, we have had exchanges very many times, agreeing and disagreeing on many issues, but our friendship continued. Today, he has left us, but we are here speaking about his humanity, his philanthropy, his audacity and courage in life. We must take lessons from life of Ifan Yoba. He was full of life, much, much younger than many of us in this Senate. But because we all go to God and go back to him at his own time, God had decided to call him and he had left us. It's not about his age. It's not about his position. It's not about his wealth. We must take lessons in his life, in his humanity, in his philanthropy, and continue to be kind to our people, to be compassionate to our people, and to always be there for our people. I believe that his family is feeling the impact already of the departure of our own brother. Rest assured, as said by the distinguished deputy president, we shall be there for you, and we pray that God Almighty shall continue to guide you and protect you, and may he have mercy on the soul of our departed brother. God bless you, Mr. President of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President and my distinguished colleagues. Today is a very sorrowful day for me and almost all of us in this hallowed chamber. Distinguished Senator Ifa Inuba is a beloved brother, friend, and confident. Ours crosses in 2002 at the residence of Sir Imeka Ofo. And right from there, a bond was built. We continue to build that relationship from the initial meeting we had as businessmen. We built a strong and unbreakable friendship that we transitioned to the arena of politics which we obviously believed and see as a service to humanity. But yet, how we felt in politics, we have together shared our feelings, our experiences, offering encouragement to each other and celebrating milestones that we've been able to, to part, not just for ourselves, for our constituents. We have been here on this particular row, most times discussing what next are we going to do in order to salvage the suffering of our people. At the most difficult time, Ifaim Oba traveled home to Inewi, to his country home, and he called me over the video, and he showed me how his home turned to Mecca with thousands of people, and I saw the palliative that he was offering 
And I said to him, we have a lot of things to do. At the same time, he went straight during that COVID period to construct a medical center where he taxed most of his friends here to contribute. And he told me that medical center, he is going to commission it in the next six months. And he did, and that is part of his humanity. He said, you must do the same. He gave me the same plan, and I'm doing the same in my place. The last was when Ifain Uba was about to leave this world. He invited me to join him to travel to the United States. I told him I would not be able to make it. A week later, he said he was going to go for his daughter's graduation ceremony where she had a first class. And that was the last I have spoken with Dr. Ifa Inuba. We have built something in common. No day that will pass, I will not complain to him or he will not complain to me. He will come with his wife, Uche, to my house. If I will come, if I'm at home, I'm not at home, he will lie down on a three-seater and sleep and wake up even if I'm not there. If I will go to the dining table for my northern friends here, colleagues, me and Kuka is a soup, a boba soup. If I'm over, whenever he comes, he will say that is the only thing he wants. So to tell you, this is the bond we have built together. But something miraculously happened. Just about 16 days to his departure. A former colleague of us here, M. Etang Eyang, brought something to Ifayan Uba. Ifayan Uba said, I'm not going to do anything until you get to Senator Saini Musa. And he came to me and showed me what. And I said, I can't do anything until what Senator Ifayan Uba said. And that is how we close that thing. And that will remain in my memory forever. May God bless the soul of Ifan Uba. May God guide his family, especially his wife, Uche, his son, Ifain, and his other brothers, and the daughter. I pray to God to guide them, protect them, and give us the solace to always pray and remember this soul that have touched the lives of many. Thank you, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, my name is Osita Izunaso. I represent the people of Imo West. Mr. President, today we mourn. Today we weep. Today we cry. Today we grieve. But my Bible tells me that we should not grieve like people who do not have hope. Today, if I remember, left a lasting memory, which is hope to a lot of people. If I remember to me, is a man who came, saw, and conquered as well. In virtually everything he touched his hand, he left memories. Is it in the media sector where he founded authority newspapers and radio? Is it in the business sector where he founded one of the strongest downstream sector companies in Nigeria, Capital Lawyer? Or is it in the security sector where he provided 
security for people of Lewe and its environs? Or is it in the sports sector, where within a short period of time, he founded FC Fayoba that won the Federation Cup in 2016? Where is it? Is it in the political sector, where he took a party that is unknown and won Senate seat twice? One has a rep seat and one has an assembly seat for its constituency. Mr. President and my distinguished colleagues, today we join his family and the rest of us to mourn. If I was a very, very, very serious family man, I remember one of the times I was having a private meeting with him. His wife came in to del deliver a message to Ifani. And immediately, if I knew that if he spoke in English, I would hear. If he spoke in Igbo, I would hear. He switched to Congo. <laughs> and he was speaking Congo to his wife. <sighs> when the wife left, I said, what language is it you are speaking? He said, that is the language of my wife and myself. But that tells you how close if I was to his wife. How many of, of, of us have different languages with our wife that we speak to her alone? Mr. President, when Ifai was about to join the All Progressive Congress, he invited me as a witness to have our popular London meeting with you, Mr. President. In that London Accord, you asked Ifai Yoba two questions. He said, are you sure you are going to join APC? Ifai said, yes, I will join APC. You're asking this one question, but I'm, I'm, I'm aware that your matter is still in court. Are you going to tell us that it is after you finish with the court matter that you join? If I said, I am joining the APC. Uche Gunifer was there, brought me as a witness. That deal was sealed. And Mr. President of the Senate said, the moment I return to Nigeria, I will go and see the commander in chief and I will tell him that the family member wants to join APC. Mr. President, that meeting, that London Accord, the family member kept to his words, and you also kept to your words. And within a very short period of time, he joined our party and transformed APC in an umbrella state. He transformed the APC in an umbrella state. Within the shortest period of time, that is the man, if I remember. If I remember is my next door neighbor, in the office. We sit on the same role in the Senate, but in the office he's my next door neighbor. I will pass his office before I enter my own. Every day I will stop by and I'll greet him. One day he finally called me and said, Are you a member of a downstream turnaround maintenance? I said, I'm not a member of anyone. He said, From today, you are a member of all the committees at the church. That was how he finally took me to Warrior Refinery. We went to Patakot Refinery. We went to Katna Refinery. I didn't know that within one month after, that if I would be no more. And he took me around. And when we started arguing, immediately after the, 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 the refinery in um, Wari, the press came to me and I addressed them. If I come in by the side and say, you know I'm the chairman. Why did you address the press? I say, I address them on our behalf. You say, okay, 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 you're my brother. That is who if I is. If I Oba, Mr. President, is a man you understand him very well. There's no love lost between you and him. People might see him as if there's a quarrel here in the Senate, but the next second, if I move from one seat to another seat, to another seat, to another seat, I make friends. The next time you see Fai, he's smiling. Mr. President, I want to end because I know a lot of our colleagues want to speak. I want to end with a popular quote of an English poet, John Donne, who says that the death of every man diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind. May he so rest in peace. Family of our brother, Senator Dr. Ifani Oba. Mr. President, I speak with a heavy heart 
this afternoon as we bid farewell to our dear brother, distinguished Senator Ifai Patrick Uba. Our path crossed about 14 years ago when he was more active, much more active in the business world. Of course, with the inclination and interest in politics. We have had exchanges very many times, agreeing and disagreeing on many issues, but our friendship continued. Today, he has left us, but we are here speaking about his humanity, his philanthropy, his audacity and courage in life. We must take lessons from life of Ifan Yoba. He was full of life, much, much younger than many of us in this Senate. But because we all go to God and go back to him at his own time, God had decided to call him and he had left us. It's not about his age. It's not about his position. It's not about his wealth. We must take lessons in his life, in his humanity, in his philanthropy, and continue to be kind to our people, to be compassionate to our people, and to always be there for our people. I believe that his family is feeling the impact already of the departure of our own brother. Rest assured, as said by the distinguished deputy president, we shall be there for you, and we pray that God Almighty shall continue to guide you and protect you, and may he have mercy on the soul of our departed brother. God bless you, Mr. President of the Senate. Okay. Distinguished SP, my grieving colleagues, my sister, his wife, and her grieving children, I'm not going to say too much. Um, it is clear that the Senate, we are all grieving for our colleague. Ifain was a very boisterous and dynamic man. One minute he's fighting with you, the next minute he's making up with you. And we're definitely going to miss his presence. Um, there are times when he'll come and say to me in Igbo in the corridor, distinguished Imanine Nyonsobu, and I'll say, ah, how can you say that from the most troublesome senator in the Senate? It is said that the only place we achieve immortality is in the hearts and minds of other people. I would like his family to know that in the Senate, Ifani has achieved immortality in our hearts. Thank you. Mr. President, I am Senator Victor Ume. I represent Anambra Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, those of us from Anambra State have been itching to speak because he was our colleague from the state. Three of us, myself and seven, Tony Way, represent Anambra State here. Mr. President, this is a very sad and dark moment for all of us, particularly for me because I had a long history of relationship with Senator Yuba politically. If you recall yesterday, the major speakers at the Night of Tributes all mentioned my name. It was for a reason. Senator Uba Ifani Patrick is somebody I feel so sad to pay tribute to as somebody who is no more but this is what we are facing here today. I knew him from 2008, and from 2011, our political journey together started when I was national chairman of Afghan. At that time, he came to see me because he had one desire in his political life to be the governor of Anambra State. And I asked him, why do you want to be only governor? He said he, want to, he wants the seal, the seal of office of governor of Anambra State, that if he gets that seal, he will bring the run for governor again. 
in Anambra State. And he came to seek my advice because we always related. We had very intimate relationship politically. So I told him this 2017, it may not work. Why not go to the Senate? He said, no, he doesn't want to go to the Senate. He's governor that he wanted to be. I said, you will be doing that. You are, I think you are going to be an excellent senator. Why not try the Senate? Because the situation that time, please, will not work. He said, OK, how do I do it? I broke out a meeting where there was a negotiation that to go to the Senate. Please, spare me. This is, uh, I can't speak one minute. And uh, I'm from Anambra State, please. And eventually, I want to pay tribute to his resilient spirit. You know, everybody has been talking about philanthropy. I want to tell you about the spirit, the indefatigable spirit of Senator Ifanyuba. Somebody who is on very, very unyielding. If he sets his eyes on something, he must accomplish it. So we agreed on that. And he now came to support the then governor for second term. At the end, they breached that agreement. It is common in the social media. Agreement is agreement. Agreement is agreement. He must go there. And when they shut us out, one early morning, by 2 AM, he came to my house and said he was going to court. He showed me the papers he had, which will go to court. And they obtained an order that had, is the candidate of Abga for the Senate. I looked at the documents. At 2.30 AM, I said, this one will not work. You may get the court order. The court of appeal will set it aside. Let's try another thing. He said what? I said, you will go to the Senate through another party. He looked at me and then accepted. Say, how are you going to do it? I said, let's look, look for party. I called Lulufale to give us SDP. Then he got, um, he got the other party, YPP. That's how he got into YPP. And then we put people around him got him connected to different structures, and he won. That's how he came here. And when I was shot out, I now went through my own way to come back. We embraced again. As senator of YPP two terms, myself through Labour Party, because the same thing that happened to him happened to me. Were you also so, in YPP? Me? No, I wasn't. The same party, Abga. Were you doing anti-party activity? No, at that time, because of agreement, because of agreement, yes, I did. Because this was something I was involved in, you know. So I did anti-party. Yeah, you yeah, are forgi yeah, forgiven. Thank you very much. So, Mr. President, I won't speak too long again because many people uh... have said everything. But let me say that there is an end to all things. Even all of us paying tributes here, all of us will die one day. There is an end. Every life must test death. So if that is the, the fact, we should begin to live like people who will die one day. If I did a lot to win God's heart through his acts of charity, so I am confident that his good deeds are far larger in number than anything he may, not, he may not done right. So those is generosity and the people everybody has spoken about. It is a man who can give without restraint. God's mercy shall follow him. Amen. And his soul will rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And I, at this stage... Just to say I've lost a big brother, a friend, an ally and confidant. Mr. President, I met uh, Senator Dr. Fan Yoba almost 18 years ago, 2006 precisely. I was just a young guy, 32 years then, as a state chairman of PDP in Anambra. We had our differences. But I must say that throughout the time I was with Ifani till his demise, Ifani treated me like a younger brother. The age is from just three years and some days. If I treated me as somebody who he was trying to mentor, I must say that if I was my benefactor, I benefited from Senator Dr. Fanyuba. As a matter of fact, 
when I got married, if I was not there, he said, Tony, I couldn't come. You are honeymoon. Where do you want to go? I said, I'm going to London. He said, he will pay for first class ticket, not even business class, for me to go to Dubai, for me to go to Palm Jumeirah. And he lodged us in one of the best hotels in the world. Then, hired Regency before something happened. Mr. President, it's not about affluence. If I stood by anything he believed in, Mr. President, if I empowered a lot of people, Mr. President, even when I was running for governor of Anambra, I was candidate of PDP. I was 38 years, if I was 41. Senator Dr. Nge, who is a leader, was that of APC. Governor Biano was uh, Abga. If I and I, we used to talk, we used to relate, we used to eat together, even as when we were contesting different parties, even as we were together here before his demise, Mr. President, if I is one of the greatest politician, Grassuto, in Anambra State, where I come from, Mr. President, the man was a hero. Mr. President, that man was a trailblazer. Mr. President, that man knew nothing like impossibility. Something people don't know about if I was, if I was very compassionate to. If I would, would try to please people at his expense, imagine Mr. President, he told me a story how he elected to drop at class three to allow his siblings to go to school. And what did I mean? That he must go to school eventually. He later went to school, based university, when he was already a senator and also had masters. That was determination. That is quintessentially fine. Mr. President, the colleagues, we have lost one of our best. We have lost one of our uh, 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 greatest philanthropists. We have lost a patriot. I'm praying to God that we, the martyrs, should remember what Solomon, who we adjured as the wisest man in the Bible, said in the Ecclesiastes that vanity of vanity, all is vanities. All of us are going back. Let us remember that one day God will call, call all of us. We are praying for Almighty God to console the immediate family of a family back to console the new people, to console the Senate of Federal Republic of Nigeria, I so, and may so rest in perfect peace. Amen. This, on the uh, Patrick Uba, and uh, I concur and put myself in all the encomiums that have been said about this gentleman. I didn't know if any until 2019, during immediately after the elections, and we were campaigning for Ahmed Lewan to be Senate President. Uh, he met me in uh, Hilton and drew me aside, introduced himself from YPP, and told me that he's going to caucus with the APC. Immediately, I took him to our meeting room. From then, he was part of us until the end of the Ninth Senate. Mr. President, from my little knowledge of this near perfect gentleman, everything that people have said about him is true. We lost a great man. We lost a man who is focused on what he wants and persists in getting what he wants with dignity and with honor. I was not perturbed, really, when he defected from YPP, even though he was the sole light of that party and went to APC. I'm sure he has a vision that he wanted to create in the APC by that strategic move. Mr. President, I can't say more than what all my other colleagues have said. I align myself with 
what they have said about this near perfect gentleman. I just pray to Allah to console his family. And also align with what Senator Tambol has said. The passing of Senator Uba is a lesson for all of us. We should sit down and reflect about life. He went through life for 52 years and gave his all. He got all the, think, the, the life goals that he has set out for himself. God, in his wisdom, took him away from us. We pray that we also benefit from learning that this life on this earth <clears throat> is a life of service. We should dedicate ourselves, like he did, to the service of humanity and particularly the local communities. I believe that Patrick Oba, if he had lived, would attain with a dynamic personality, political heights that only very few have attained in Igbo land and Nigeria. I pray for Allah to bless him bless his soul, and give his family the solace in this time of their loss. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, the leader.